Well, what a fabulous event. Really grateful to the organizers for inviting us. And, and as always, it's an incredibly moving and inspiring experience to be here amongst you and to have the privilege to share some of our work with you. And we're going to be here, myself and other members of the team, for the next two days. So kind of look forward to, to speaking with you all. Okay, so what I wanted to do today in the next 10 minutes or so was to give you a brief overview of the NIMH study of XY variations, its goals, its study design, some, a, a sprinkling of our key findings and some future plans. So first, there's some context. We're based here in the NIH Clinical Center, just outside Washington, D.C. This is the largest uh, research-dedicated hospital in the world, and the study was actually started in 1990 by Dr. Jay Geed, which I'm sure many, many of you have met or know of, and that first phase ran from 1990 to 2010, and it was mainly focused on cognitive development and brain structure, and it saw about 150 uh, individuals with a range of XY variations. So uh, the new phase of the study grew out of this first phase. It, it officially began at about 2015, and there's a sort of five-year, about $5 million kind of investment in this project. And, and the idea is this is the first sort of phase two for phase three. And the, the purpose of the new phase was to get deeper and wider behavioral assessments uh, for clinical feedback and to inform the science, more information about first-degree relatives in the study, uh, and day-to-day -day functioning in individuals with XY variations, much more detailed measures of brain structure, function, and connectivity, and also critically to take advantage of new technologies that have been developed since uh, to measure the genome structure and function. And this phase is considerably larger, so we're seeking to see about 500 uh, participants to allow us to sort of personalize our predictions, as earlier speakers have been alluding to. So who's on the team? Uh, some of you will have met some of these individuals um, that I'm lucky enough uh, to work with. We're a mixed team, so I'm a child psychiatrist with a background in uh, neuroscience and genetics, but we have nurse practitioners, um, clinical psychologists, computer scientists, uh, geneticists, molecular biologists on the team. This is the sort of clinical team. Uh, some of you may have met uh, Cassidy, Ajay, um, Catherine, and Ari, who, who, were on the, um, who were with us in the last couple of years. Pleased to say that, uh, that um, Alyssa, Kathleen, and Ethan are here today, uh, and those of you who come through the study will, be, will get a chance to meet them, and these are some of the other uh, psychologists and clinicians on the team. And we work together with this network of collaborators within the US and the UK to try and address um, a key sort of set of overarching goals. And as you've heard from earlier speakers, these goals are really rooted in, uh, primarily in the concerns raised by uh, individuals with XY variations and, and families. So this common experience, we had to tell the, tell the doctor what, insert your XY variation of choice here, kind of was. Uh, and I think what needs to be done to address this is to, as we've heard before, to increase awareness of XY variations amongst clinicians and scientists and to improve our understanding of development and then share this information widely so that when a newly diagnosed family meets a practitioner or a care provider, there's going to be a better level of information and understanding there. Another common uh, set of concerns are, well, what can we do to help support his or her development? Should we consider treatment A or treatment B? And these sorts of questions really um, can't be answered unless we can more fully understand the wide range of variation in outcome that we can see in XY variations, and then try and identify factors that can predict where someone is going to land on that range of variation. And then finally, there are the really difficult questions, the why questions. Why is he or she having these developmental difficulties? Is there a test we can take to early to help identify and predict issues early on? And these sorts of questions really require us to understand how XY variations are influencing genome structure, function, and brain organization. So our research goals try and hit these areas that I've just kind of reviewed. So as we're trying to do this, we're guided by four uh, key kind of principles. The first thing that sort of uh, we hold to is the idea that we'll do a better job of understanding any individual XY variation if we study all XY variations. So trisomy X has a lot to tell us about XXY and the other way around. And this, has, this, this, this principle is rooted, actually, in the ancient evolutionary history of the X and Y chromosomes. And this is something we'll, I'll be able to dig into a little bit deeper in uh, the talk uh, later today. 
So this idea of studying all XY variations together. Secondly, the critical need to understand individuals as well as groups. So if you take 100 individuals with trisomy X, for example, there'll be a huge kind of variation. And it's critical for us to understand that variation and to understand within an individual variation, what are they good at and what things do they find a little bit more difficult, perhaps. And then within an individual over time, how are things for them now and how will things be for them in the future? And we need to measure all those aspects of variation to be able to do the best job that we can do. And I think we need to get better at measuring development. And you've heard this theme come up in some of the talks earlier today. Right now, we measure development using scales and instruments that have come to us from the past. And we need to build on that progress and try and refine and make um, improved measures. So we need to get better at understanding individual variation in a way that's meaningful for families, to find measures that's meaningful and predictive of how people will do on a day-to-day -day level, but also helps us track behavior back into the brain and genes. And I don't think we have measures like that yet, and we need to develop them. And critically, as I've alluded to already, we need to link up different levels and to understand how XY variations influence the genome, how that tracks on to influence the brain, and how that tracks on to influence behavior and cognition. So these are the sort of guiding ideas that shape how we address our research goals. So what kind of study design do we need to address the questions that I've alluded to? I'm going to walk you through the way it looks. So we need a lot of data, as you've heard of already. So, oh, is this showing? Yeah. So um, these are different XY variations and the sort of numbers that we're um, seeking to look at in the initial phase. So we gather, when participants come through the study, uh, samples of uh, blood, uh, skin, to derive uh, different cell types that we can study genome structure and function in. Oh, is the movie not working? That's a shame. Let me see if I can get it to run. No. Yes. So we gather uh, different types of measures of brain organization to measure brain structure, uh, function, and connectivity. And then participants... Um, I'm sorry, this isn't working too well. But, uh, and then there's a large emphasis on detailed interviews and questionnaires to measure, as I was mentioning, different facets of behavior so we can combine all this information. <coughs> I'm showing you here where we are in the recruitment uh, sort of process. So what does this look like for a family that comes through the study? Well, this is a typical two-day visit. This happens to be from a recent part, um, a visit of a family uh, where a young person had XXY syndrome. Uh, and there's a sort of detailed process where the families walk through uh, a, a range of face-to-face uh, -face interviews, questionnaire completion sessions, MRI scans. And we take all of this information, we combine it. And there are two main outputs. Uh, from all this information. One is that we sit together as a multidisciplinary team, combine the information and write a report that's provided back to the family uh, for their use and to send on to clinicians they might be working with. And then the second thing is we take all the data that's been generated and put it into databases and submit that to computational analysis. Now, I don't want to go through all of the, the, the research that's been done with these data, and we'll, the studies are available on the ACCESS website, and I'll be digging into them in some of the later talks during these two days. But just to give you a brief overview, <coughs> these are some of the things that we've been working on in the past few years. So we've used these measures of gene expression from tissues in participants with XY variations to begin to pinpoint specific sets of genes on the X and Y chromosome that we think are most likely to be driving the impact that XY variations can have on brain organization. And we're keen to now follow these specific genes and see how they're functioning in neurons. We've also been mapping XY variations on different aspects of the brain. So what you're seeing here is a spinning uh, brain. This is the outside, the folded cortical sheet. And where you see color, those, we find that those brain regions are anatomically sensitive to XY variation. And where you see white, those brain regions don't seem to be so affected. The color that you see indicates whether that brain region is sensitive to X or Y, just X or just Y. And this comes back to what I was saying before of, of the information you get when you study multiple XY variations together, you can really start to pick apart the puzzle and find the roadmap of which particular brain regions might be mediating the effects of the chromosome on behavior and cognition. 
And talking of behavior and cognition, this is what I was saying earlier about the need for us to improve our behavioral measures. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to take all of these questionnaires that are traditionally used and um, combine them into a network. Um, and we use that network to distill all of the existing measures into more, what we hope is more informative subsets of measures. So each of these dots is, a, is an existing measure. We made a network out of them and then clustered the measures into sets of symptoms which tend to go together. And now what we're going to do is for each individual we say, well, how heavily are you scoring in the blue part of the cloud? Rather than each individual dot, we average across all the blue dots. And we think that's probably going to help us a little bit better in what we're trying to achieve. So what about future work? Well, broadly, the emphasis is to try and link up these levels, as I was saying, to try and figure out how these driver genes might be impacting these specific brain regions to give rise to these types of behavioral difficulties in some individuals. And this is involving two broad avenues of work. One line of work is to take tissues from uh, participants who come through blood tests or skin samples and to make brain cells in a dish out of those tissues so we can try and understand how XY variations might be influencing neurons because we can't get neurons from patients easily. And then the, the other, uh, which you'll be very pleased to know, we, uh, we don't seek to do that. And then the other arm is to try and use uh, algorithms or computational analysis, as Alan Reese was alluding to, to try and crunch all this data down in a way that the human mind couldn't really do. So I just want to leave you with a quick snippet of something we've just been working on. It's under review now, and we're super excited about it. And this is trying to link up the levels. So what we did in this study is we took this brain map uh, of how different brain regions are sensitive to XY variations, and we aligned it to maps of expression of 15,000 genes in the human brain. And we asked which of these genes has a spatial expression pattern that looks most like this map. And that's giving us a list of genes that are expressed in the brain that we think could really be strong candidates for determining why this bit cares about X, why this bit cares about how many X's or Y's you've got, and why this bit cares about how many Y's you have. And that's a really key insight, I think. It's gonna take more work, but we're getting close. And finally, I know time is tight. Another really important thing, and I hope that comes out of this session, I was pleased to see all of the researchers who are working on this on stage together, because as you've heard already, we're really going to make the best progress we can by combining information. So we're already beginning uh, fledgling efforts to share data with other labs, and already in this meeting we've been having discussions about formalizing this, about pooling all our data. We started to post our data sets publicly. So a few weeks ago, we posted 1,500 brain scans from typically developing individuals online. And the idea is to move towards this effort with XY variation scans, assuming consent in place. And we make research tools to help study the brain and make them public so other people can use them. And finally, uh, ultimately, we hope this work is going to matter to uh, individuals and families. By and, and make a difference, hopefully, um, on various timescales, short to long. Uh, we hope to make ultra-detailed maps of the difficulties of learning, mood, and behavior that some people with XY variation can have, to find the sets of brain regions and connections that might be underlying this risk, and to develop lab tests that might help us predict future outcomes in a given person with XY variation. And, and some of that work is going to rely on making these brains in a dish model that I mentioned uh, earlier. So there'll be uh, other uh, folks from the lab presenting our work. I'm speaking a bit later today. Uh, Shrishti Rao, uh, the developmental psychologist within the team, and Erin Torres, a psychiatric nurse practitioner, are going to present some early data from the XXY phase of our study later today. And Kathleen Wilson, uh, one of the researchers in the group, is going to be uh, presenting a poster tomorrow. And we're all here to chat with any of you um, whenever you like. And it's a real privilege to be here. Thank you for your attention and for being part of the room.